Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to overclock your brand new Raspberry Pi 400 up to 2.2 gigahertz. And it's pretty fast at those clock speeds. But before you get started overclocking your Pi 400, I personally recommend 100% to back up your micro SD card, especially if you got the kit. It's got Raspberry Pi OS on it. It's actually easy to flash and download from their website if you want to. But by backing up the card you have now, if anything ever goes wrong, all you need to do is reflash it to a micro SD card, and everything you've changed so far in that operating system will be transferred over to that other card. Now, it's pretty easy to back up your card on any operating system. If you're on Windows, I would recommend Win32 or Etcher, but you can also do it directly on the Raspberry Pi. There's a cloner built in, and it will back up your full SD card to another card. So before you start overclocking, back up your card. Now, when it comes to cooling, the Raspberry Pi 400 CPU, while overclocked, it actually does a great job itself. There's actually nothing we need to do here. It has a huge heat spreader built in, and they've done a great job designing this. And even overclocked to 2.2 gigahertz, running all day for me, I have not reached thermal throttle. So let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to do this all on the Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to make it as easy as possible. Now that you've determined that you do want to overclock your Raspberry Pi 400, we need to get a few things out of the way. We want to monitor our temperature, and we also want to monitor that CPU clock speed. So we're going to go up to the top here, right click, and we're going to add remove panel items. From here, we're going to go to add, and we're going to add a few. So if we scroll down, there's a lot of stuff to choose from, but mainly what we're looking for here is the CPU temperature monitor. So we're going to choose add. Now that's located up here. It'll give us a real time temperature on the CPU. We need to add a CPU frequency front end. And if we hover over this, it'll give us our current CPU speed. And finally, one thing that I like to add is just the usage monitor. You don't have to add this if you don't want to, but I'm going to choose add. It gives us a little graph here. When the CPU starts being used, you'll see some bars come up. So we now have a real time temperature monitor. We have a real time clock speed monitor and a CPU usage monitor. Let's go ahead and overclock this thing. So the Raspberry Pi 400 comes out of the box at 1.8 gigahertz, but we can get a little more out of it. There will be a link in the description to this text file I've created. Gives us everything we need to know about overclocking. I'll also copy and paste this in the description. So I actually have three different setups that we can go with. 2 gigahertz, 2.1 gigahertz, and 2.2. Now note that 2.2 is the highest we can go as of making this video. I've tried going higher, and this seems to be a good little setup here. On one of the Pi 400s that I have, it actually works without that force turbo, and it also works with over voltage at 6, but I have another one where I had to go up to the over voltage of 8 to keep everything stable. Now it's really up to you if you want to do this, but when you do add force turbo to your config.txt, there's a chance it'll void your warranty on the Pi 400 or any Raspberry Pi. But if you stick with the 2 gigahertz or the 2.1, you won't have to worry about that. So there's a couple ways to go about doing this. We're actually going to be doing it all on the Raspberry Pi in this video. But my personal favorite way of doing it is shutting the Raspberry Pi down, taking the SD card out, and placing it inside of another PC. I'm going to open the config.txt file that's on that micro SD card in a notepad editor, like Notepad++. And all I'm going to do is paste that overclock, over voltage equals 6, arm frequency equals 2.1, in that config.txt file. I'll save it, come back to the Pi, boot it up, and I'm overclocked. But in this video, we're going to do it all on the Raspberry Pi. So we need to open up terminal. You can press Control-Alt-T on your keyboard if you'd like to, or you can just tap this little terminal icon up here. And now, while the Pi is running, we're actually going to access that config.txt file, and we can edit it while everything's up and going. And to do that, we're just going to type in sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config.txt. Press enter on your keyboard, and we can now edit the config.txt while the Pi is up and running. So what we're going to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom, and it really depends on how high you want to overclock. Personally, I like going as high as I can, so I'm going to go with the 2.2 gigahertz overclock. But you can go with 2 gigahertz or 2.1 if you'd like to. With the 2 or the 2.1, you're going to do over underscore voltage equals 6, arm underscore frequency equals 2000 or 2100, depending on how high you want to clock. But when it comes to the 2.2 gigahertz overclock, 
you may need to add force turbo equals 1, over voltage equals 8, arm frequency 2.2. And this is going to overclock our Raspberry Pi to 2.2 gigahertz. So in order to save this on the Pi into config.txt, you're going to press Control X on your keyboard. Would you like to save the modified buffer? Y, enter. It's now saved. But our clocks aren't there yet because we do need to reboot one time for all of these changes to take effect. You can do that from the Raspberry Pi icon, go to logout, reboot from here, or from terminal, sudo reboot. So now that we've rebooted our Raspberry Pi 400, let's just make sure that those clocks took effect from that text file that I have in the description at the very top, lscpu. We're just going to open up terminal and type that right in. Now you can see our CPU max megahertz, 2200, which is 2.2 gigahertz. And we're overclocked, so I am overclocked to 2.2. We also have that CPU monitor here. And you can see that our governor is set to on demand. So we're idling right now at 600 megahertz. But if we put a load on it by even just opening up uh, the Chromium browser. And I'll load a video. We'll just hover over it while it's working in the background. And you see that it jumped up to 2.2. So we are overclocked on our Raspberry Pi. And that's basically it. Now, when it comes to CPU temperatures on the Raspberry Pi 400, I personally haven't had any issues at all, even overclocked to 2.2 gigahertz, but I do keep an eye on this. If it gets up to around 65 or 70, I do get a little worried, but I've never seen those temperatures on the Pi 400. I mean, the Pi Foundation has done an amazing job with this unit. It's got a giant heat spreader in it, and I've been able to run this all day long at 2.2 with no issues whatsoever. So personally, I wouldn't worry about the temps on the Pi 400, even overclocked. But that's pretty much it for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I hope you were able to get your Raspberry Pi 400 overclocked. It definitely makes a difference, especially going up to 2.2. All links for everything that I mentioned are in the description. And I'm also going to leave some extra links down there on how to clone your card and how to recover if for some reason your Pi didn't boot at these clock speeds. But for most people, you shouldn't have any trouble if you followed the instructions in this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and like always, thanks for watching.